My name is Valeria Sousa. I work as a researcher at UNAM, the National University of Mexico. That is a very large university. This is probably the most important site that we have in the world right now to understand the origin of diversity. This place has an amazing geology that you can see just in front of you. We have that kind of tsunami of rock that uplifted because the mountain that is over that edge, that is like an arrow, has a, an active fault with magma underneath. And it's pushing all the marine sediments that form this valley up. And then it, it flips and makes a heart shape. 3,000 meter mountain. So all this amazing geology is the explanation why Cuatro Cienegas is a singularity. Because these marine sediments store the conditions of the ancient sea. They store the magma that is rich in sulfur that takes us all, all the way back to the Archean. And it stores the mineral that form this sand. And these minerals are very old. And also, it is a sediment that is devoid of the most basic element for life, that is phosphorus. So this site is amazingly poor in phosphorus, and that makes for a very uh, skewed stoichiometry. And most of life now cannot live in a skewed stoichiometry. We need 60 nitrogens per each phosphorus. Here we have 100 nitrogen at least for each phosphorus. In some places, 200 nitrogens per each phosphorus. So how can they make basic things as ribosomes or DNA? It's because they are really good stealing phosphorus from anybody else, including rocks. And so they have an amazing array of strategies to deal with the lack of phosphorus. And they did that since the Archean. And so here we have stromatolites and microbial mats whose ancestry goes back to the Precambrian in some case, and we are going to a site where we think we have the Archean, the boundary between the Archean and the Precambrian. Since this is a, a blue pool, we are talking for the moment where animals turn the planet blue, and that was in the Decardian in the late Precambrian. My name is Maria Colombo Kitas, and I'm an intern for a year working in Valeria's lab at UNAM in the Department of Evolutionary Ecology. And right now we're at Posas Azules at the site of the Archean domes. Um, so here you have a microbial mat that um, created a bubble through the activity of the methanogens, um, created a bubble, and then it eventually burst, um, creating this perimeter. And so we sampled the microbial mats um, that are still present there. Um, and right now they're hidden beneath uh, the salt crust because it's so dry. My research is looking at the evolutionary resilience of the microbial mats at Cuatro Cienegas. Um, so the microbial mats create a codependent community where each layer is sort of representing the history of metabolisms on Earth. So you start with methanogens, which create nutrients for the next layer of sulfur oxidizing bacteria, um, all the way up until photosynthesis. Um, and so through this uh, community, they've become really dependent and on each other, and they evolve together, um, creating a really resilient community in Quatrocinias that has existed for um, m many millennia. Um, I was interested in the microbial mats because they're evolutionary resilient and they've existed so long here, but also because they've existed in an environment that many other organisms couldn't exist. So for example, a really low nutrient content, in particular low in phosphorus, which is thought to be necessary for the building blocks of life. Um, so they've existed for so long, um, they're able to exist in an extreme environment. And that, and therefore it creates sort of a living laboratory of organisms that are alive today and indicative of communities that existed long ago. So in origin of life research and in astrobiology, 
Um, usually you're looking for signs of life, like biosignatures on another planet, or you're uh, breaking open old rocks to see if there are compounds indicative of life. Um, but in Quattro Cienegas and in these mats, we think that we have the organisms that form the same communities that were that existed long ago. So as a biologist, it's really um, exciting to actually be able to study it alive today. La gran pregunta es por qué tantas especies, no solo en el planeta Tierra o en este lugar, sino la historia de sobrevivencia. El origen de la vida probablemente fue muy fácil. Probablemente el origen de la vida se dio de millones de maneras posibles. Tal vez hasta en los cometas hay orígenes de la vida que duran muy poco. Pero en este planeta la vida sobrevivió. Se agarró con sus dientes de las piedras y transformó todos los minerales. My name is Gabriela Olmedo Álvarez and I work at Sintestab. Sintestab means Centro de Investigación y Estudios Avanzados. I'm in, in Mexico, in the, right in the middle of Mexico, in Irapuato, and I'm the director of Simbestab Irapuato, although I'm also a researcher. And I've been working in, for 15 years close to Valeria Sousa in trying to decipher what are, are the, the keys that allow that so much diversity of microorganisms inhabit these places. And if you are looking at, at the font behind me, that's a, a beautiful pond, and it looks like it doesn't have much because it doesn't have a lot of nutrients. And that is why it's so interesting. It doesn't have nutrients, but it has lots of different bacteria and has evidence of very old life. So it also has these stone-like things that are stromatolites. And stromatolites are evidence of the first types of life in the planet. But here they are still alive. They are still you know, blooming. And it's very interesting because this is very, very old types of life. And that is possible precisely because there are no nutrients. So other larger things cannot compete with it. And that allows this to remain for centuries and millions of years. But if we walk just a few meters away, maybe just 200 meters, we'll find a very different scenery. We find these very salty crusts. And these salty crusts are full of life also. They have very special life with lots of salt and with a low pH. So it's a weird life that we do not understand. And that's sort of one of the focuses that, that we have for this trip, to be able to sample what things are living there. And we'll take them to the lab to figure out how some bacteria or archaea can live with these very, very extreme environments. In the system called Pozas Rojas, because these ponds are fluctuating environments, they get very saline in the summer because the water evaporates. It's deep water, it's not rainwater. So each one becomes more vivid color than in winter where water doesn't evaporate as much. And so they, they get like their juiciness concentrates in the summer. And the life that lives here is very diverse. There's microbial mass that we have sequenced. There's a, a very large biodiversity. And there are like islands. There are nine small islands of, of these tiny posas and a big lagoon. So you can compare the, the diversity in each one of them by separate, and then the the big posa in the middle. But this was perturbed by a hurricane in 2010, and it became a complete lake, all of it. It's, it kind of drained all the nutrients and, and all the water from the west side, east side of the valley. And the biology changed because then the fossas became connected with the lake water. And also the nutrient change. It was, before the hurricane, it was the site with less phosphorus. And now is a site that is nearly has a balanced stoichiometry. So it is very interesting that how the, the life uh, got habituated to this richer environment.
And what is even more interesting is that what was a very primitive site, it became a more Holocene site. So, for example, the Vibrio that lives here, they didn't uh, radiate till the Holocene in Cuatro Cienegas, which is at the same time that the fishes came from the Rio Bravo shell. So, they are very interesting and they are always changing and that makes us really happy and we are following the change. So I'm sure that the deep aquifer still has the, the deep ancient bacteria. It's just that, that the, the lake that shed here, that came here, brought newer creatures from everywhere that were bacteria more used to nutrients, and maybe there are pockets of nutrients in different parts of the valley. And what makes Cuatro Cienegas unique is precisely the lack of nutrients. So maybe they are going to become, each time that we sample, more and more on balance and return to their ancient selves. But it will take time. Mi nombre es Jorge Valdivia. Eh, soy profesor de tiempo completo en la Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. Yo realicé mi estudio de doctorado en el Valle de Cuatro Ciénegas. Estuve trabajando con el género Bacillus. Y el proyecto estuvo enfocado en conocer la relación que existía del número de copias del operón ribosomal eh, con la disponibilidad de fósforo. Se sabe que en el Valle de Cuatro Ciénegas es un sitio extremadamente oligotrófico. En este, eh, con estas condiciones eh, son homólogas a lo que podría, eh, las condiciones que estaban en el pasado cuando se originó la vida. Y entonces lo interesante saber era cómo un género que se caracteriza por tener muchas copias del operón ribosomal podía adaptarse con, a estas condiciones de extrema oligotrofía. Lo que hicimos fue trabajar con aislados de los principales sitios del valle y lo que hicimos fue cuantificar a nivel eh, de genoma cuántos superones ribosomales tenían y los pusimos a crecer eh, con agua del sitio para simular las condiciones eh, naturales en las cuales se encuentran eh, viviendo. Y lo que observamos es que eh, existe una nula correlación con respecto a la hipótesis de la tasa de crecimiento, en la cual se dice que pocos operones ribosomales están vinculados con un sitio con poco fósforo, por lo tanto la tasa de crecimiento tenía que ser lenta. Lo que observamos fue una alta heterogeneidad del número de copias de operones que iban desde 6 hasta 14 copias, que es un número normal. Sin embargo, a la, a la, en el momento de ponerlas a crecer en agua extraída de estos sitios, Hicimos su dinámica de crecimiento por un lapso de 24 horas y observamos una serie de adaptaciones que son estrategias ecológicas para poder sobrevivir bajo estas condiciones. Por lo tanto, lo que pudimos concluir es que eh, cada uno de estos microorganismos, si es que están emparentados con los que vivieron en el pasado, esta dinámica de crecimiento cada uno se va adaptando a las condiciones nutricionales para no competir por los recursos y poder coexistir eh, a nivel de una comunidad. Pero, ¿cómo sabemos que este es el lugar más diverso del planeta? Bueno, una indicación son los virus. Los virus son los cazadores más feroces del mundo y como cazadores feroces tienen cada uno su presa favorita y Cuatro Ciénegas es el lugar más diverso de virus del planeta en una escala chiquitita. El valle es chico. Y la comida favorita de esos virus son las bacterias. Estas nada más son las bacterias del Churinsi. Millones de especies nuevas de bacterias que solamente existían en ese lugar. My name is Nawi Medina and right now I'm a PhD student in uh, Nuevo León, Monterrey. So right now I'm doing this amazing project about archaea and extremophiles. So what we do right now is trying to isolate every single microorganism that we can and do it this uh, with amazing people in, in the lab, you know, trying to create a strategies to make these um, microorganisms to live in the lab. So um, this is pretty much interesting because Archaeus, you know, in ancient Greek is about ancient, you know, and um, this means that it could help us to know how they live and trying to understand how the, uh, I mean, you know, how life is, uh, was begun, you know, in, at that moment. So it's pretty uh, interesting. It's so, they are so beautiful because they have so many colors, red, pink, and like a, a, a yellowish, uh, some of them. So 
it's a uh, pretty amazing project we're doing right now and um, maybe because it's in a place where um, the, the whole ecosystem you know and the whole habitat is um, it's like in no one in not in another place you know you can you cannot find the, the, the species are in here so it's uh, very uh, interesting because the the microorganisms or, or the prokaryotes are living here they're just living here and that's it you, you cannot find them in another place in the world so uh, that's what we're doing and we're so happy to do it and here we are in Poza Sul 2 that is one of the most beautiful posas in all the valley and what we can see behind us is a very big tomato like shell so this blue posa take us back to 600 million years ago when the animals changed the chemistry of the ocean and the ocean turned blue and that's called the edigia and so in in Cuatrocienegas we have kind of different time frames different moments in geology that got preserved that's really interesting because it's not just a metaphor. It's not just that it looks like the Edicardian and when the ocean turned blue, and still the stromatolite shells were being eaten by the first herbivores that was their doom. But also is that these lineages survived, survived for the longest time. In the Archean Dome that is 50 meters over there, we have evidence that the Archean, a world of methane and CO2, is preserved inside domes that is, are built by bacteria that protect their ancient anaerobic bacteria from the oxygen input while they are doing photosynthesis. And this kind of cooperation and construction of the whole niche is pretty unique. We know that stromatolites were world builders. They made the ocean blue. They transform every element that came from the stars and make life complex. But the fact that here in Cuatro Cienegas we have a window, a true window of those lost worlds is really incredible because you walk meters and you find three billion years on time. And you can have lineages that are very, very divergent from the ones we know now. And how they assemble their nutrients, how they work, we can cultivate them, we can study them using metagenomics, but for them to be studied, we need water. And this water here is precious. It's not just any water. It's a water that comes from that mountain that has a magmatic heart. And that magmatic heart is responsible for the oasis. So what happened is humans, we are really silly and we think we can manage nature. And when there's agriculture in the desert, where the water comes from, it comes from the deep aquifer. And this is not just any aquifer. It's an aquifer that has stored the conditions of the early sea. And we are losing it. And then we have the tragedy of Turinse, where there's no longer water, when it looked like that. And now, it's a, it's a field of dead turtles and dead fishes. And maybe there's some hope that we can recover it if we close all the channels that are taking out the water from this ecosystem. Y que tenga la historia completa del planeta. Es el único lugar que guardó la memoria viva del planeta. Y ustedes son los guardianes de esa memoria.